Warm greetings to everyone and today's title of the study is The Path of God Leads Us Through the Sanctuary. The word sanctuary symbolizes a holy place. A place can be holy only if God is present there and if it is consecrated for his service. On one occasion God said to Moses, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. God chose a place where he would place the sanctuary that is his temple, through which, in a symbolic way, he would reveal the plan of salvation to men through sacrifices, ordinances and feasts. The earthly temple is modeled after the original sanctuary, the temple that is actually in heaven. Regarding this, the scripture writes, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, the temple, which the Lord pitched and not man. God showed Moses, David and Ezekiel, down to the smallest detail, how to build sanctuaries according to the original which is in heaven. So far two sanctuaries have been made on earth. The third is not but its appearance and all the details were shown to the prophet Ezekiel in a vision. Through these three temples, God described the plan of salvation which consists of three phases, precisely because each temple describes a phase of service in the great plan of salvation. They differ from each other and the service in each of them is also different. The Temple of Moses describes Christ's high priestly ministry between his first and second coming. Solomon's Temple describes the service during the millennium or between the second and the third coming, and Ezekiel's after the millennium or after the third coming. How did Abram's intercessory service in Moses' Temple begin? And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate and an effort and a robe and a broidered coat and a mitre and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart, when he goeth in unto the holy place, that is the sanctuary for a memorial before the Lord continually. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil, and pour it upon his head, and anoint him. The temple consists of the yard and two chambers, first the holy place, and second the most holy place. The earth is the yard of the original temple in heaven. Jesus came to earth, that is the courtyard, that he would die for men on Golgotha, which represents the altar, and later he continued his high priestly ministry in heavenly temple, in original sanctuary, the holy place, and later, after he finished the work in the holy place, he will do it in the most holy place too. The service in the heavenly temple began with Passover, the first feast, and Christ's death on the cross. Then the importance of the earthly temple of Moses ended, and the service of the heavenly one began. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the wail of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. When Jesus on the cross said, It is finished, the curtain which was in earthly temple, dividing holy place from the most holy place, was rent in twain, and that marked the end of the service in the symbols and the beginning of the real service. And uh, from the earthquake the lamp escaped, the knife fell out of the priest's hand, and that was a sign that the earthly service was ended, but the great original service of our Lord Jesus Christ began. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water, Blood and water dripped through the crack in the rock caused by the earthquake and fell into the lid of the Ark of the Covenant, which name was the Mercy Seat. This means that Christ's life has given us atonement for God's law 
that we have transgressed. During the service of atonement, the priests sprinkled blood on the east side of the mercy seat, while Christ's blood sprinkled the west side, which marks the end of the service in the earthly temple. At the Last Supper, Jesus said that he will make a covenant with all people with his blood. When he was sacrificed upon the cross, he personally sprinkled the mercy seat, and thus overtaking the role of the high priest who at the time was doing it. Thus he became both a high priest and a sacrifice. The heavenly temple consists of the yard, which is our earth, and two chambers in heaven, which are called holy place, the first room, and the most holy place, the second room. Just as there are two chambers in heaven, so there are two ministries that Jesus performs. The first is the daily intercession service, and the second is the annual atonement or cleansing service. Daily intercessory service was done in the yard and the first room called the holy place, an annual service in the most holy place of the temple. Daily in the holy place and annual in the most holy place. The first was intercessory service in holy place and second was cleansing service or atonement service in the most holy place. On the next chart we see how the Lord Jesus came to this earth where he died, was resurrected and after the 40 days he ascended to heaven. When 50 days were reached, Jesus began his intercessory service and then he poured out his life, that is, his spirit, upon his church, i.e. apostles. So from the Pentecost, Jesus performs intercessory service in heaven. Then according to the prophecy, the judgment began in 1844, and it lasts until the end of the grace for the entire world, um, which is at the same time the period of the intercessory service. They both will end at the same time, and that is the end of grace for the world. This also means we have a mediator or a defender at the judgment. And then at the, at the end of the grace for the world, Jesus will change into white linen clothes to perform the atonement service. When this service ends on the Temple of Tishri, also known as Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, and the Jubilee year begins at the same time, Jesus will take off the linen clothes and wear royal kingly robes. And within the seventh plague will the second coming of Christ occur, and he shall come as King of kings and the Lord of lords. At this point, the service related to the Moses temple will be completed and it will end. The daily intercession service was performed every day in the courtyard and the first room of the temple called the holy place. This is why it got such a name. Repentant sinners brought their sacrifices daily at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and by laying their hands on the head of the animal for sacrifice, they confessed their sins. In this way, they figuratively transferred the sins from themselves to the innocent victim. Then the animal was slaughtered. Without bloodshed, says the apostle, there is no forgiveness. Violated law of God required the life of the transgressor. The blood, which represents life, whose sin was carried by animals for sacrifice, was taken by the priest to the holy place and sprinkled with it in the front of the veil. Behind the veil was the Ark of the Covenant, in which was the law that the sinner had transgressed. With this ordinance, sin was figuratively transferred to the holy place by blood, and thus was the sanctuary defiled. In some cases the blood wasn't brought into the place, but then the priest ate the flesh of the sacrifice, as Moses instructed the sons of Aaron, saying to them, God had given it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation. Both ordinances equally represented the transfer of sin from the penitent to the holy place. 
Thus the sanctuary is defiled or contaminated with the sins of the penitent. It was a service that was performed day by day throughout the year. In this way the sins of the Israelites were transferred to the holy place and a special service was needed to remove the sins from there. Once a year it was necessary to cleanse the holy place from all the sins that were brought into it through the daily service and defiled it. The annual service of atonement or cleansing of sin from the holy place was performed in the most holy place. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Day of Atonement The day in which the atonement service is performed. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. In the ninth day of the month from even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Just as the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary, holy place, was done in the earthly service at the end of the year, so at the end of the history of the world, and that is just prior to the second coming of Christ, the work of cleansing the heavenly sanctuary will be done by removing and cleansing of sins from the heavenly holy place. I, even I, I am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Just as in the image of cleansing the earthly sanctuary was removal of the sins made that defile the sanctuary, so the actual cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary must be performed by removal of the sins that are written there in the heavenly books. When will the heavenly sanctuary be cleansed? And when he had opened the seventh seal, which means that the sixth seal was closed, there was silence in heaven about space of half an hour. With the end of the sixth seal came the end of Christ's intercessory service in heaven, the end of the heavenly judgment, the end of the grace for the whole world, and the end of defilement of the heavenly sanctuary through the confession of sin. With the opening of the seventh seal, Jesus begins the annual service of cleansing, that is atonement, the confessed sins that are written in the holy place. After that, judgment day begins with its seven plagues. The silence in heaven of about half an hour, so it is not precisely half an hour, but it says about half an hour, prophetically observed, equals to seven days. How do we come to this calculation? Well, one prophetic day is in fact one year, and one prophetic year is 360 days. Therefore, one prophetic day equals to 360 normal days. In one day, we have 24 hours, so 24 hours equals 360 days. The value of one hour we get by dividing 360 by 24, and we receive that one hour equals to 15 days. Half an hour would be seven and a half days, but there it says about half an hour, which is thought of seven days. And it is same as it was in the days of Noah. Therefore, we get by prophetical observance that about half an hour is seven days. And after that, there will be a period of 150 days when seven plagues will be poured out. Before the flood, after Noah entered the ark, God shut the door, and that was the end of grace for the antediluvian world. So that Noah couldn't come out, nor the unrepentant could come in. But for seven days, the people, knowing not their doom was fixed, continued their careless, pleasure-loving life, and mocked the warnings of impending judgment. Saviour said, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Silently, unnoticed as the midnight thief, 
The decisive moment will come and seal the destiny of every man. Finally, the offer of grace will be withdrawn to the sinful man. Now we see the parallel between Noah's time and our time. And when he had opened the seventh seal, which would mean that the sixth seal was closed, there was silence in heaven about space of half an hour, and that is seven days, as was in the days of Noah, seven days and then 150 days, so shall also be in our time. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Seven trumpets are announcing seven plagues. The seven trumpets are parallel display of the seven plagues. The books of prophet Daniel and Revelation are twofold display, which means that the same events are described two times so the Lord could better explain to us his revelations. In the book of Daniel, the four world's kingdoms are displayed through the statue made out of the four types of metal and through four animals. Two times the same explanation, so is with the trumpets and plagues. There are twofold display, and when we see what trumpets affect, that is earth, sea, rivers, sun, earth, etc., so the plagues affect the same, that is earth, sea, rivers, sun, earth, Euphrates, skies. We see the parallel there. What is happening within seven days prior to the outpouring of the seven plagues? When we read in order, chapter 8, we see the first verse speaking of opening of the seventh seal, and it speaks of the silence of about half an hour in heaven. Then verse 2 says, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The seven trumpets herald the seven plagues. However, they don't blow the trumpets until something happens first. Before the seven plagues are poured out in these seven days, Jesus erases the sins of his people and that of all the faithful who have confessed their sins and left them by his power for the past 6,000 years. Those who did not confess and forsake their sins and are alive at the time will be wiped away by the plagues along with their sins from the face of the earth in the terrible day of cleansing. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. During the daily service at the altar of incense, the high priest took and offered incense between his fingers, which represents the merits of Christ that he attributes to an individual. He put incense on the fire, resulting in smoke ri rising up, representing the prayers of individuals from God's people who pray to God for the forgiveness of sins, relying on Christ's merits and help. When he says, given unto him much incense, it means two full hands of incense, which indicates a cleansing ministry. In Leviticus 16, verses 12 and 13, we read the same event. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seed that is upon the testimony, that he die not. Much incense, or two full hands, represents merits of Christ which he offers, and it's applied to his entire people which ever lived in the earthly history of sin on earth. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter unto the temple, till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. The meaning of that no man is able to enter into the temple is that during the outpouring of the last seven plagues there won't be done any work of salvation for men and that nobody will be able to defile the temple by confessing their sins which would have been recorded in it. 
The service of intercession for man and defilement of sanctuary is finished forever. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place, until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. Nobody could be there nor enter in the tabernacle while the cleansing service was in the progress. Then we read further Revelation 8.4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Jesus is cleansing his people in those seven days. And when he is finished, when the seven days are past, then the next verse 5 says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar, now there is no more incense, which are the merits of Christ, because the second group did not want to lean on Christ and by his help conquer sin. The unrepentant desired to remain and live in the sin. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And this is the symbol of the outpouring of the seven plagues. The pouring of fire from the altar upon the earth represents the outpouring of God's wrath in the form of the last seven plagues on the unrepentant who rejected Christ as their Saviour and his intercession which he performed in the heavenly sanctuary. The recording angel whose work was to seal returned from the earth and informed Jesus that he had finished his work and that the faithful were numbered and sealed. Then Jesus, who was serving before the ark, is displayed throwing down his censer. He raised his hand and said aloud, It is done. The time of grace is then finished for this world. Then Jesus says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. By then all have chosen, either Christ or the enemy, the devil. And the seven angels which had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And only when the service was done, the angels then prepared themselves to sound. The seven trumpets announced seven plays which are going to be outpoured upon unrepentant. In that dreadful time after Jesus' intercession ends and service of cleansing begins, people of God will live before him without a mediator. How did the course of service go in heavenly temple? After completed three spring feasts in the courtyard of the heavenly temple, which is our earth, on the fourth feast, the day of Pentecost, Jesus began to perform daily intercessory service in holy place of the heavenly temple and he will perform it until the end of the time of grace for entire world. After the end of grace, he will move into the second chamber called the Most Holy Place to perform annual cleansing service, that is atonement, which lasts until the beginning of the millennium when he will become a king. Now we have an explanation of Leviticus chapter 16. Again, we have the chart from before which explains what Jesus did in the courtyard, what he does now in the sanctuary and what he will do in the most holy place. And when he is completely done, he will become a king and come for the second time. We are now studying Leviticus chapter 16. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord, and they died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. And this is the second chamber, called the most holy place, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. The mercy seat is the throne of God. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. 
A bullock is a prefigure of Christ and the ram of Lucifer. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. And then will Jesus wear white linen clothing. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. He is first taking off priestly garments and dressing on white linen robes in which he performs cleansing service. And he shall take off the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. In this verse the most beautiful love of God is presented here. Of the congregation of the children of Israel, that is, from us people, he shall take two kids of the goats for a sin offering. Here, God is showing that he desires all people to be saved, that all should die to sin, to be a sin offering, to give up their bodies, as Apostle Paul says, into sacrifice pleasing to God, to die to sin, to be born again and to become new humanity, in which by the help of God they will live the victorious life, the life free from sin. And then he says, one ram for a burnt offering. The next verse says, And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Here the bullock is offered, and the high priest and his home is being cleansed. And his home are those who are in heaven, say, Moses, Enoch, Elijah, etc. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. And after casting a lot, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat, that is for Azazel. Casting of lots represents heavenly judgment. After the judgment, it, it was decided that one goat represents the repentant who belong to the Lord, and the other represents the scapegoat that is the unrepentant who belong to Satan, or Azazel. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Only one wanted to die for a sin offering. And that is the group who repented of their sins and turned to the Lord. And the other group unrepented are depicted with the scapegoat for Azazel. But the goat on which the Lord fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord, which means they were alive in sin and did not want to die to sin, to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And now is showing the course of the cleansing service. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house. Here was depicted the sacrifice of Christ, who was offered in his best age. Here he is depicted by the young bullock, he had but only thirty-three and a half years when he was sacrificed. So he cleansed his own house first, and these shall be, say, those who are already in heaven from earth. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, and the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And at this point the blood was reached in the mercy seat for the first time. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times, and that was the blood of Christ. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering and these are the repentant that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock 
and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. The plan of salvation is beautifully presented here, where two bloods unite together, the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood, say, of God's people or the repentant. The life is in the blood. Here two bloods or two lives unite together. Our life must unite with the life of Christ. We need to be partakers of the divine nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have Christ's mind, thoughts, feelings, spirit. We need to be a temple of Christ's Holy Spirit. So it comes to unity between our and Christ's life to truly become the partakers of the divine nature of Christ. And at this point, the holy law of God will not condemn us. For if one be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old is passed away. Behold, all new is made, says the word of God. Then the law of God, if it be in Christ and his life in us, will not judge and condemn us. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. How long does the cleansing service last for? It is necessary to distinguish between the Day of Atonement, which in Old Testament times lasted 24 hours, from evening to evening, and the service of cleansing, that is atonement, which lasted for several hours at the end of this day. We can freely say that this was an afternoon or evening service. We read about it. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Day of atonement lasts for exactly twenty-four hours, from the evening of ninth until the evening of the tenth, Tishri. In the original service, that day is observed prophetically, and it lasts for one year, at the end of which the service of cleansing must be performed. The cleansing cannot continue from 1844 until today, and at the same time the sanctuary to be defiled. In the Old Testament era, Day of Atonement was from evening 9th until evening 10th of Tishri. When the evening and the night passed, in the morning people and priests got up very early. On that day, the high priest still wore his intercessory garments and offered the morning burnt offering, same as he did on all previous days of the year. This part of the service on the Day of Atonement was still the part of the daily intercessory service. When the morning service was over, in the afternoon, at the end of this day, cleansing or atonement service was performed. Then was the daily intercessory service of the high priest interrupted, which is why the priest had to take bath and change his clothes, because each service required special clothes. So also in the New Testament service of Jesus Christ in the last year, and uh, 5099th, that begins on the 10th of Tishri and ends on the 10th of Tishri a year later which is represented by this day, the Day of Atonement, during the first part of the time of that day, Jesus will still perform daily intercessory service, and then will the end of grace for entire world come, and the end of his intercessory service, when there will be no more chance for repentance and forgiveness of sins. Jesus will say, It is done. And then he will put on white linen robes and begin to perform the atonement that comes at the end of this last year before the millennium begins. That would be, say, these 150 and the seven days of silence from somewhere in May until October. In the Holy Scriptures, the Day of Atonement is also known as Day of Wrath, Day of the Lord, Day of Judgment, 
or day of sacrifice. The mentioned Bible verses below describe this prophetic day, or a year, as well as the events that will take place within it. So within the year, it won't be the entire year, but within that last year will be cleansing. The seven plagues will take place. And we said it will last for these five months and seven days. Revelation says, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Day of wrath is a year in which the plagues will be poured out, i.e. wrath of God. Revelation 18.8 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, or in one year, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judged her. In one day means in one year, plagues will come, death, mourning and famine. Isaiah, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Day and year have same meaning, execution of God's judgment and payment to the unrepentant for their sins. Isaiah 63, 4 For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. That is a day of vengeance for unrepentant and a year of redemption for repentant. Also, on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. So no man could be in the tabernacle, no one could defile the sanctuary that is to become free from his sins by repentance. In the book of Hebrews says the same thing. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first room or tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, so him alone, no one else, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. In Revelation we read the same thing now. And one of the four beasts gave unto seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke. This is an image of the cleansing service. The smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And he shall go out into the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it, and shall take the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round the bar. And we see this all the time where the blood of bullock and the blood of goat is mingled together. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And these are the unrepentant. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, 
and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. In other words, Jesus who died for all men and offered the free gift of salvation to all, but the unrepentant did not want it and refused it, now will Jesus put their all sins upon their head and saying, You will now die for your sins because you refuse me to die for your sins. And the gold shall bear upon him all their iniquities into a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. In the Old Testament times, the goat for Azazel had to die in the desert and was therefore thrown off a cliff into a bess to suffer a violent death. The unrepentant surrender to Satan and he will have complete authority over them now. They will spend a millennium together in the wilderness, with the difference that Satan will remain alive while they all will be dead during these thousand years. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with the water in the holy place and put on his garments. After the service of cleansing was over, Aaron was bathing again and putting back on the intercessory garments. However, after the service is over in the temple of Moses in heaven, Jesus will wear royal robes because the service in Solomon's temple will follow. Jesus takes off his linen robes and puts on royal robes and comes as King of kings and Lord of lords into this world. Praise God! With this event, the plan of salvation is fulfilled for those who have chosen Christ for their Savior. And in the book of Leviticus 16 says, And come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. During the millennium, Jesus performs the service of a king, a priest and a judge, described by Solomon's temple. At the end of the millennium, he offers Satan as his burnt offering and the unrepentant as the people's burnt offering, destroying them in the lake of fire. And we read about it in Revelation. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, and these are the unrepentant to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and the fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then, at that time, will the sin and sinners be destroyed for all ages of eternity. and entire created universe of God will be forever clean of sin. From that day no more sin nor a sinner. And everlasting righteousness will rule throughout the entire reign of God. May God help you and I that our path be the path of God which leads through the sanctuary. May God be with you all until our next fellowship. God bless.